ladies and gentlemen, let the spotlight fall on a woman whose composition resonates with strength, courage, and unyielding determination. Join me as we explore her symphony of justice and unyielding spirit. Let's learn about Marvel's Echo, a.k.a. Maya Lopez. Be vigilant day and night. What's up, nerds, and welcome back to my channel. I don't know why I did that. I have problems. I'm your host, Danny Sansasi, licensed cosmetologist and registered super nerd, and this right here is Comics and Cosmetics, the channel where I give you all the juicy deets on our favorite costume crusaders while doing my makeup at the same time. Well, you nerds, watch. Before we go any further, make sure you smash that like button, attack the subscribe, and sacrifice that notification bell to our algorithm overlords so that they know you want to see more of this. I don't know why you would, but super appreciate that you do. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out some of the links below. There are several different options, including our merch store. I'm wearing one of our new designs. I enjoy it, and it's super comfy, very soft. We also have Buy Me a Coffee and Patreon. Also, if you're interested in the products that I'm going to be using today, please check out the description below. I have listed and linked every single one of them for you. This week, as I told you from the future, we are going to be talking about Marvel Comics' own Echo. Echo is a special character. I'm incredibly fond of of Echo myself uh, for a couple different reasons. One, she is indigenous. She's of the Cheyenne Nation. She's also disabled. Yeah. And it's super cool for me because I'm disabled. Yay! It was a weird reaction. In the comics, Maya Lopez was born deaf. In the new show, Echo, not only is she deaf, but she also has a prosthetic leg, just like mine. I get excited. But the great thing about her character is that her disability turns out to be an advantage in a sense because she was also born with this incredible ability to mimic. Yes, yes, I know. Taskmaster already does that. But hers isn't like a superpower. She's not a superhuman. It's just she's really good at sense memory. Not just muscle memory, sense memory. Echo, the comic, first appeared in December of 1999. So she's the same age as my son. It was in Daredevil, number nine. She started off as a supporting character for Daredevil. She was created by David Mack and Joe Casada. And as always, when we're doing these breakdowns, I do encourage you to definitely read the comics to get the full story because there's no way I can give you every single detail, every single storyline in half an hour to an hour. It's just not possible. So make sure if you want to know the full story that you read the comics and start with Daredevil number nine from December 1999. 
She's been known by other names, not just Echo. She was also the first Ronin, not Hawkeye. Echo was. And that was in the New Avengers number 11 in 2005, written by Brian Michael Bendis and artist David Finch. It was an attempt by Bendis to give her some mystery. They were going to make Ronan Daredevil, um, but they changed their minds. But that's why Ronan was always depicted as a very male figure, because it had not intended for Ronan to be a woman. It's just something that they changed their minds on. They're like, let's make it serious. It was a girl the whole time. Ah. Maya Lopez was raised by her father, Willie Crazy Horse Lincoln. He was an enforcer for Kingpin. He worked for him. They were partners. And he had moved to New York many years prior. The Kingpin kills Maya's father. And right before he kills him, Crazy Horse is like, hey, take care of my daughter. And Kingpin says like the most awful thing. I can't really repeat it because it makes me feel uncomfortable because I know that growing up disabled people called me that word because for some reason some people can't separate physical disability from mental disability. Not that either is worse or better, but when you take a word and you make it derogatory, it doesn't feel very good. Now, does it? No, especially for something you're born with and can't help. But Kingpin says to him, what? The <laughs> one? Yeah, it wasn't nice. Just because she's deaf doesn't mean she's mentally challenged. Come on now, Kingpin. Thought you were smart. Crazy horse wants Kingpin to take care of his daughter and it's kind of a weird move but Kingpin agrees and immediately ships Maya off to this boarding school for disabled kids which can be a good thing and a bad thing. I've been there you know being around a bunch of people who are different like you're different so you don't feel singled out or ostracized or picked on but at the same time, kind of want to fit in with everybody else. So there's that. But she goes to this school for deaf children. And it is discovered that though she is deaf, she has this sense memory thing she can do. Just by watching someone play piano. And remember, she's deaf. Just by watching someone play the piano, she can sit down and play it exactly how that grandmaster pianist did she watched someone dance on a movie and she can mimic it copy it exactly so the teacher at the school tells kingpin like this girl has an incredible talent she can dance she's the greatest concert pianist i've ever seen and she's deaf it doesn't make sense but it's amazing listen beethoven okay beethoven kingpin decides this could be worth something okay this could be worth something. So he sinks money into it. And he's like, yeah, you are going to get the best training at literally everything because I think this is going to pay off one day. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually she gets older. She grows up. And on top of all of the music and dance training, ballet that he has put the bill for and, you know, put her through, he also gets her martial arts training and she can just keep up with the best of them because of her amazing ability to copy what someone's doing. Just pick it up by watching someone do it. It's not just necessarily a, a copy thing. It's a learning by watching someone and then imprinting it in your mind, almost like a photographic memory, but for muscle and sense memory pretty impressive so eventually she does grow up and she's just straight killing it she's this very well-known pianist dancer just impressive fantastic martial artist and so the kingpin decides to cash in on his investment and he tells maya that this guy matt murdoch is going around telling people that kingpin's a bad guy and he's like, I'm not a bad guy, am I, Maya? I'm I'm your daddy now. I'm your adopted dad. I've taken care of you all these years. And he's saying bad things about me. I want you to go and take care of him. Find out his weaknesses. Get close to him. She's like, well, Fisk is not a bad person. Kingpin, Wilson Fisk. He's not a bad person. So I am just 
could get close to this dude. I'm the only way. Prove that Mr. Fisk, Uncle Wilson, is not a bad person. He's taken really good care of me. Well, at this time, you know, Matt Murdock's going through a really rough go because Karen Page has just died. And that was his girlfriend. So he was pretty vulnerable. And I'm not sure how into getting to know someone else he was. But he and Maya hit it off right away. They're like, hmm. You're disabled, I'm disabled, I mean, you're deaf, I'm blind, and we're doing things that able-bodied people think should be impossible for people like us, but it's true, that is that is a thought process that happened. So they're like, we got a, a lot in common, and they kind of start seeing each other. Soon after, they fall in love, that's right, and Maya takes on her echo guys to go track down the daredevil, the devil of hell's kitchen. On her face, she paints a white handprint like right here. And the reason why she does that is because when her father died when she was nine, he reached up and touched her face and left this bloody handprint. So she does this in remembrance and in honor of her father. She finds daredevil and proves to be more than a match for him because she had actually been watching recordings of Daredevil fighting Bullseye. You know, Bullseye doesn't he doesn't get enough credit. He's a pretty decent fighter in the Marvel universe. I mean, it sucks that the versions of him we've gotten have been not the best. It helps her figure out Daredevil's best moves. So when she does run into him, they're pretty evenly matched. It's pretty much a draw the whole time. <laughs> After fighting for a while, Maya realizes that Daredevil does just fine in the dark. And so she takes him to a place where it compromises his hearing. Because that's the thing with Matt Murdock, Daredevil, he has great hearing. Very, very good hearing. So his heightened senses are basically useless at this point, And she easily takes him down and almost kills him. She only stops when she realizes that it's Matt. Matt and Daredevil are the same person. Yeah, that super sucks. And Wilson Fisk knew. He knew this whole time. He didn't care. Maya keeps telling him that, you know, you're trying to take down my adoptive father. And she's like, not only is my adoptive father a good man, but you, you killed my actual father. Kingpin told Echo that Daredevil killed her father, Crazy Horse, and even said it was with this gun and gives her this golden pistol. And so she's like, well, I'm going to shoot him with it. Bet. Well, when she confronts Matt about this after she figures out who he is, Matt's like, I'm going to drop some ice cold facts on you. I would have been a child. We're pretty much the same age. I would have been in elementary school when your father was shot. Like, <laughs> duh. I mean, maybe she was just so blinded by pain and rage and general upsetness that that didn't click in for her. I don't know. I don't know how else to justify that. Okay. All I know is that when Matt says that, it clicks in for her and she goes, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? So that pretty much exposes Wilson Fisk, the kingpin as a lying sack of dog and Maya's like I'm gonna go say something I'm going to go confront him right now this is gonna happen so she takes that gun the gun that Fisk said was used to kill her father so she takes that gun and she confronts Fisk and he tries to tell her that you know he still loves her he admits yep I, I, I killed him and no matter his explanations or confessions and pleads of love for her it didn't matter she shoots him right in the face like right in the face somehow he survives i guess because money he's got all of it but he is blinded which is a delicious comic book irony right there this kind of knocks the first domino over for kingpin's downfall and he ends up in prison she leaves town after that. She just is like, mm, I'm out. Bit much for me. I'm out. And she leaves town. She actually leaves the country because, like I said, it's just, it's overwhelming to her 
that everything she's grown up with, it's just been lies. Her whole life has been lies. So she leaves the country for a while. But she comes back and she reaches out to Matt. She loves him. She wants to be with him. But Matt had already moved on. He had pretty much become the king man himself. And he had a woman, a new woman, and could not be with Echo. Didn't want to be with Echo at that time. Kind of hurt her, but she dealt with it. By going to see Kingpin in prison, you know, she finds out Kingpin's still alive and goes to visit him in prison. She does, and he tells her that he still loves her and always has as his own daughter in his way, which means I'm a selfish sociopath and can't love anybody, but I tolerate you. Itchy nose. All of this was very upsetting for Maya. She thought that she was going to get some sort of closure or peace out of this, but it doesn't work at all. So she turns to Chief, who is an old friend of her father's, and he sends her on a sort of vision quest. He's a very wise man. A lot of people go to him for his words of wisdom. He tells her in order to calm her spirit, she needs to go on a quest, a vision quest. On this vision quest, she meets and befriends Wolverine. Yeah, buddy. And he actually helps her. He helps her really recover from all of this trauma. And he passes along to her a lot of knowledge of Japanese culture and Japanese organized crime. She stays in Japan for a while. And this is when she takes on the nom de guerre of Ronin. So after everything she's been through, this identity crisis that she's been suffering and not wanting to join the Avengers, even though she's been offered, because she doesn't want to make the rest of those heroes look bad since her adopted father is Kingpin and she did a lot of bad things in his name at his behest because she thought he was a good guy. She didn't want to tarnish tarnish the reputation tarnish. That's super midwesterny. Uh she wanted to tarnish the reputations of those heroes by having her on their team. So she decided you know, I'm just going to go on this vision quest that Chief told me to and hang out in Japan with my bub Wolverine for a bit. She decides to conceal her identity and gender and renames herself the Ronin, which in Japanese culture, for those of you who have seen the Keanu Reeves movie, you would know this because that's how us Western people get our cultural information movies but ronin is japanese for wanderer or a samurai with no master and that's how she saw herself so she stays there as ronin and tries to do what hawkeye was doing in endgame and give some give some justice to some of the japanese organized crime well while she's doing that the avengers are having trouble with this dude that goes by the name silver samurai And Matt Murdock recommends to Captain America to ask for Echo's help while they're there. Like, oh, well, I have an ex-girlfriend that's there. She can help you. She's been there a while. Okay. She joins the Avengers to help. And then afterwards returns to Japan to keep an eye on another very dangerous assassin ex-girlfriend of Matt Murdock, Electra Nachos. Love it. Love it. Oh, Electra. This Electra Nachos was assumed to be leading the hand. Love the hand. She would also check in on Silver Samurai from time to time as well. Make sure Silver Samurai is behaving themselves. She was really hoping that she could resolve these issues between Clan Yoshida and the hand. So after Civil War, Maya fights Electra and loses she's killed like electric kills her but that's okay because the hand scoops her up and resurrects her with the same process they used to resurrect electra because the hand are bastards but hey they resurrected her but of course they're not just gonna let her go like okay we've resurrected you we're evil but we've resurrected you so you can go goodbye no 
they were keeping her hostage and they were going to brainwash her and train her to be one of their assassins. That's right. Lucky for Echo, Miss Maya Lopez, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Wolverine, Spider-Woman, and Iron Fist, and the new Ronin, Hawkeye. You know how uh, Hawkeye got that? Eh? Well, I'm so glad you asked because here's the tea. Hawkeye and Echo banged. That's right. Yep. She joins the Avengers after helping with Silver Samurai. That's when. And she passes the Ronin costume and persona off to Clint Barton. But I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. And don't worry. He and Mockingbird had divorced. So he was single. And uh, yeah, him and Echo totally got it on. So there's number two Avenger that uh, Echo's notched on that bedpost. Good for you, girl. Good for you. Get it, girl. Get it. So, back to the hand has her captain. And Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Wolverine. I almost said Wolverine. <laughs> what was I thinking about? I was thinking about Hawkeye and Echo. <laughs> so, anyway, so all of those people I mentioned, Dr. Strange, Wolverine, all of them, they go to rescue Echo. Well, this leaves Electra. And the hand, furious, furious. So Electra sends the hand after them. Like, she's pissed. How dare you? How dare you take my new prize? Well, Luke Cage tries to negotiate with Electra. Like, girl, calm down. Seriously, what is your problem? He's just trying to buy time. While he's doing this, it is discovered that the hand was actually successful in brainwashing Echo, and she flippin' stabs Doctor Strange. She's able to stab Doctor Strange. She stabs him with a sword that the hand gave her. She continues to fight the new Avengers until Doctor Strange is able to release an astral form with Wong's help, of course, and this frees Maya from her brainwashing. Handy. Super handy. Well, Maya was none too thrilled that she had been brainwashed into attacking her friends and stabbing Stephen Strange. So she takes that sword and she kills Electra. But it's not really Electra. No, it's Skrull Electra. She was a Skrull the whole time. Yeah. Once they get back to New York, it's discovered that spider woman's a scroll too and she had stolen electra's scroll electra's corpse like they everywhere these scrolls they're everywhere yes we are talking secret invasion when they get back to new york you know maya officially tells clint keep the ronin stuff keep it it's better for you anyway you need it well dr strange casts a spell that reveals everyone's true identity so we can see who's a scroll and who's not. And we actually see Maya appearing in a female version of the Daredevil costume. Like, that's kind of cool. She, that's basically what she is, a female Daredevil. They head up to Stark Tower to stop the Hood from attacking it. But guess what? They encounter the Mighty Avengers locked in a battle with a bunch of symbiotes. Never a dull moment, never a day off. One actually latches on to Maya before Iron Man, you know, manages to find the cure and cure everybody. This poor girl, she cannot get a break. She's had a rough go, man. She's had a rough go. She was a part of the World War Hulk story. She defends Rick Jones from the Hulk's warbound during an attack on the Sanctum Sanctorum to capture Doctor Strange. She got captured then, too, with Clint Barton and Iron Fist. She gets captured a lot, but she always gets away, or she dies and then gets resurrected. It's a thing she does. There was this whole thing with a cosmic with the Cosmic Cube. It wasn't a very good storyline. Like, Coulson makes a deal with Mephisto, and he starts, like, messing with reality. It just wasn't very good. After they had actually defeated the Hood's crime organization, she stayed on with Doctor Strange. 
while he was departing to the astral plane to heal himself. She set up a base in a building owned by the Iron Fist, Danny Rand's company, but technically leased it to Samuel Stearns for the year. And then they had a brief run-in with a Skrull who tried to mimic Daredevil. That did not work out. She goes to the Savage Lands with the Avengers when a Skrull ship crash lands and a bunch of heroes come out in old costumes. Like, what is happening? The new Avengers start fighting the old Avengers, but it gets broken up when uh, a dinosaur shows up and everyone's split. I mean, that'll do it, right? See a dinosaur, like, fuck, cheese it. Didn't see that coming. So remember I said Spider-Woman was also a Skrull. Not just any Skrull. No, no. She was the Skrull queen. Mm, mm, mm. And they find out that she was behind everything. Everything? Everything. Spider-Woman knocks Echo out by repeatedly hitting her with these blasts of venom and then smashing her into a tree trunk. Vicious. But she gets up and helps the Avengers kill all the other Skrull imposters. Good for her. She then heads over to New York to confront the Super Skrulls, along with a lot of other Marvel characters, good and bad guys. Really should read Secret Invasion. Afterwards, Danny Rand, you know, aka Iron Fist, invites her back to Captain America's apartment to, like, celebrate and chill. And she's like, no. <laughs> Doesn't show up. Just ditches him. <laughs> when the Avengers regroup and form new Avengers, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones need a nanny for their baby daughter, Danielle Cage. And she's one of several people they ask, but she's pretty offended. Like, what part of me makes you think nanny? No! She's pretty pissed about it. I don't blame her. She was really underused at this point. And in fact, it's like Marvel forgot she existed. She was only in this book for this one panel, for this one line. That was it. She was in no other part of this book other than Jessica Jones and Luke Cage asking Echo to be the nanny for their baby. And Echo says, do you guys even remember that I was an Avenger? Like, do you even remember that? That's her only line in the entire book. A little underused, if you ask me. She does appear in the Moon Knight series. So she was undercover in L.A. as a stripper and doing just fine on her own until Mark Spector shows up and totally blows her cover. She was not pleased about it at all. But he later proposes that they join forces to work together with the same goal to take down this new kingpin that had popped up on the West Coast. So they do. Moon Knight is obviously attracted to Echo. Like, it's okay. Everybody is. But, and, and Echo thinks he's a bit of all right too, but he's nuts. Like, she asks around about him. <laughs> She's like, is this guy for real? Like, is, is he okay? And they're like, He's good. He's crazy. Like, he really, he's crazy, but he's hes a good guy. Like, he's hes a good, good hero. So she continues to work with him to take down this new kingpin. He does try to kiss her, and her immediate reaction is to punch him in the face. Like, she <laughs> knocks the absolute <laughs> out of him. And... He does kiss her, but it was completely out of left field. Like, she wasn't expecting it, so she punches him right in the face. I mean, really hard, and then apologizes for it. Like, they go back to his apartment, and she says, you know, it wasn't, like, an I wasn't offended by it. You know, it wasn't completely bad. I wouldn't mind. I like you too. I just wasn't expecting it. So he's like, well, you go clean up in my shower. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. 
and she does. But uh, she comes out and there's people there. <laughs> Look, that's got to be awkward. Hello, Avengers. I wasn't doing anything. I was just taking a shower. Like, we need your help. Count Nefaria. So they find out that Count Nefaria is the guy trying to be the new West Coast kingpin. And he actually kills Echo. She dies again. And she's resurrected again under mysterious circumstances that are never explained. Never. The whole, like, the book starts off with, due to mysterious circumstances, Echo is resurrected. All right, say no more. Because comic books. Claw invents this sonic device that turns people avengers into zombies well because she's deaf it didn't affect her so she's able to stop it she has worked with captain marvel she worked with her against a uh, radioactive man but my favorite so far is the newest echo story that's still kind of going on i haven't read all of it so I'll probably do another breakdown about it. But there was this big crossover called Enter the Phoenix. And the Phoenix Force actually kidnaps a bunch of heroes, kind of like Battle World. And wants all these heroes to kind of compete to be the Phoenix Force's new host. So all these heroes and villains, the Phoenix Force lends a piece of itself a little bit of its power to each of these individuals all these different characters and echo is pitted against namor so we're like twenty thousand leagues under the sea something like two thousand leagues into the deep of the ocean and they're fighting and namor is actually winning like he actually wins and he's like yeah and echo is like sinking to the bottom of the ocean but the Phoenix Force chooses Echo. Shock. It was how Echo is able to take all of that pain and trauma from her life, from growing up disabled and losing her father and finding out her childhood was a lie. It was the fact that she was able to take all of that in and use it to never, ever stop, to never give up, and just to keep fighting and moving forward and just refusal to die and give up. The Phoenix Force saw that and was like, yes, yes, that is exactly what we're looking for you. You are the galaxy's new top Phoenix. Congrats, girl. The Phoenix, you know, she's brought up and takes all the power from all the other participants and takes it within herself. So she takes all that power into herself and declares herself now Thunderbird and completely bonds with the Phoenix Force. She is telepathically contacted by the Phoenix Force's previous host, Jean Grey. We've talked about her. Yeah. Jean Grey congratulates Echo and helps her by giving her advice on how to control and live with the Phoenix Force. She has since continued to remain as Thunderbird. She's now time traveling with this very attractive man named River Walker. And she goes back in time and meets her ancestors. She sees her mom, like the first time we've ever had her mentioned, really, in Echo's history. But she she visits her, her ancestors, her great-great-grandmother, her great-grandmother. It, it's wild. I can't wait to finish it. It's a pretty good book. Maya's story is one of rebirth and renewal. She rises from the ashes of tragedy, and she finds herself resurrected and ready to wield justice and to start her life anew. 
every time from teaming up with Moon Knight to saving New York from this zombie device to her involvement in the Enter the Phoenix storyline. Her tale is a continuous crescendo of heroism. What I love about the character of Maya Lopez, a.k.a. Echo, a.k.a. Thunderbird, is her unyielding resilience. Her ability to be knocked down time and time again, but nothing ever keeps her down. She is immediately back up, barely dusting herself off, and using that to fuel her determination to move forward. I love that about her. And as someone who grew up disabled, I recognize that. I recognize that whole, you just keep fighting. You just keep pushing forward. Because what are you going to do? Are you going to sit here and cry and just will yourself to death? Or are you just going to keep moving forward and keep enjoying the life that you do have. I love that. That's such a powerful, powerful message that we can use our pain. We can use our trauma as fuel for your creativity, for your energy to move forward and keep going every single day because this is the life we have. Why mourn it? Yeah, it's got its down parts, but it's got some pretty great ups too. I know I've got plenty of both. But the ups are so much better than the downs. And that's a really great lesson to learn from Maya Lopez. Look at everything she has been through. And now she's the Thunderbird. She is the host for the most powerful force in all of the Marvel Universe. The Phoenix Force. Her possibilities are endless. And it wouldn't have been possible had she not been so determined. And tenacious. I think that is also a hallmark of another side of Maya, her Cheyenne, and now we know also Choctaw heritage. Think of everything Native Americans have been through and somehow still celebrates life, still celebrates the planet that we share this existence with. I really feel like the personality they gave Maya Lopez is really fitting for her being indigenous and disabled. We are hearing very mixed things about the Echo series. I do know that the Echo role is Alakwa Cox's first acting role, her first job as an actor. I thought she did well in Hawkeye. I really loved her. I was very excited. I was I really felt something. Like I really felt when, you know, I watched her with her father as a child, when I watched her in her martial arts training, I did some myself with a fake leg. There's some funny stories about that. Maybe I will tell you sometime. It really resonated with me, her character in that show. We are hearing mixed things about the Echo series. We're hearing that the whole thing's going to come out at once instead of week at a time, like we normally been getting with Disney Plus shows. Some people are saying it's not so great. Others are saying it is. But as always, like I say, we've got to find out for ourselves. We can't let anyone else's opinions color ours before we even see a frame. So I, for one, will wait till the series comes out and then I, I will form my own opinion all by my lungs. But that is all I have for you nerdlings today on Echo, Thunderbird, Maya Lopez. If you like the content that I'm putting out, please smash that like button and I hope you're subscribed. If you're already subscribed, double check and make sure you still are because sometimes YouTube does things, you know? They just do. If you are interested in helping support the channel, I have some options in the description below. And again, all the products I use today are also listed and linked in the description below. I have been Danny Sansasi. You have been super awesome. And as always, have a wizard weekend and I will see you in the next one. Stay nerdy, babies. Bye.